Welcome to another live episode of Unleashing the Future of Work, a guide podcast. You know what, Unleashing the Future of Work community, how's it going today in this lovely morning? If you're probably watching or listening from the West Coast, it's afternoon in the East Coast, but wherever you're tuning in from, please show some love in the comments. I know we're connected on all platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and LinkedIn. So let's show some love in the comments. Today I'm joined by an awesome special guest, someone who I really admire his work and the amazing company that he's building. Today I'm joined by Warren Schaefer, who is the co-founder and CEO of Knowable, an audio-first learning platform that's working to unlock billions of hours of quality learning time. They are backed by top investors like A16Z, Initialized, and Upfront, and they're hiring and scaling quickly. And if you're really interested in working with them, definitely join them. But more importantly, realize this, Noble is the future audio learning platform of the future. And I'm really excited to kind of go dive deep with Warren and his journey in building such a successful company and encourage you all to check out the product. So with that said, let's go ahead and bring Warren on and show him some love. Let us know where you're tuning in from so we can show you some love and shout you out. Warren, what's up, man? Good morning, Tim. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. Thank you for finding time, man. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Yeah. Feeling very lucky. Yeah. Uh, dude, 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 dude. I'm so happy to hear that. So I want to show love to Anthony. Anthony saying, yo, Tim. Shout out to you, Anthony, who's tuning in from London. Paula is saying, hey, Tim. Paula from Sweden. Hey, Paula. How's it going? So, dude, Warren, you know, I would love for you to share a little bit more about your background, man. Because, you know, I, when I first found out about Noble, I was like, dude, this is going to blow up. right? This is going to be the audio learning platform of the future. And it's because it's so focused on quality content, you know. So, dude, what inspired Noble, man? Yeah, so really scratching my own itch, which was I like learning, but found it really hard to find time for video courses. And I've always yeah. liked audio. I've been a fan of audiobooks since I think probably before they were cool when they were called books on tape and I uh, went together with my co-founder Alex we, we kind of looked at the education market and we thought wow everybody's focused on video and wouldn't it be nice if you could learn in a structured way over in an audio first way so that you can actually fit learning into your time into your life and so really the mission is can we unlock learning time for for busy people around the world that's it that's it. That's Simple it. as that. That was, that was, uh -huh. I was like, well, why is no one doing this? We and then we looked really hard. And we're like, no one is doing this. We should do this. And yeah, here we are. And, you know, I, I think what's so interesting too is that people don't realize because I'm actually an auditory learner. Um, a lot, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of audio and visual, and everyone's like has a different learning format. But people don't realize the power in really quality audio content. You know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, with, with, you can't teach everything over audio. There are certain things that definitely benefit from, from visual. And we're not an audio yeah. only platform. We're audio first. But we really believe yeah. that audio is great for inspiring and energizing mm. interest in a particular field, too. So, right. Mm. So, if you, if you're even something like computer programming or starting a startup, there's, you know, lots of technical details, but you can get somebody taking those mm. first steps through audio and if yeah. if you've got a great video course but you don't have time to watch it um that doesn't help much versus you know, yeah you know having a having something in your ears that you can you can learn alongside with as you go through life yeah 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 so shout out to derek who is tuning in from colorado hey derek hey nyla what's up hey alexander who's tuning in from denver hey vicky how are you doing vicky from illinois you know let us know you know how do you learn best you know is it audio consumption video consumption what is it and make sure that you check out noble and the amazing work that they're doing more importantly you know i, I want to ask you Warren. you know with you just going through the the process of, of building such an amazing company man you know how did you kind of approach building a team and really like creating that structure, that culture for success. Yeah. So I'm fortunate to, this is the third business that I'm working on with my co-founder. So we've actually known each other yeah. for, for almost 10 years now. So um, investing in the people that you work with is really important yeah. because those are people that, that can grow with you. And um, in terms of the team, you know, really the more and more I, I work in startups, the more I, and convinced that having a mission driven company is so, so important mm. because then you unify everyone in the same direction. And so finding people mm. who are interested in the mission and excited about it in the way that you are in the, in the sense that, Hey, this is something that they would, they would, this is what they want to spend their life working on, or at least you mm. know, a good portion of it that, that really matters too. So that's generally my, yeah. 
my advice is, is find a mission that you believe in that excites you and then find people who are also excited by that mission. You know, and I think what's so powerful about that, too, is creating clarity around it, too, right? Like, being very crisp, this is the mission, and then this is the, the path forward. I want to ask you, Warren, you know, for, for you, you know, kind of growing into to becoming a leader and all the amazing work that you're doing, you know, for you, was it kind of like having that deep introspection and saying, okay, if I want to build things to sustain and outlast, I have to be able to have a clear vision in how I want to articulate it? I think it's helpful. Yeah. Across the board. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to end up where you want to go if you don't know where you're going. So, mm. so the mission is kind of the end, the end point. And, and, there, and there's really two parts of it. One is a vision and one is a mission, right? And the vision is kind of like yeah. the why, why are we doing this? And you work in education too, Tim, like you, you've yeah. got a, you've got a strong why you are excited about bringing the best out of people. Right. And, yeah. and so I think that's the, that's the why part. And then the mission is really sort of what's our best guess of how we get there. Right. What, yeah. what can we do to bring us closer to that vision of the future? Yeah, man. Let, let me ask you, man, who inspired your your kind of like um, your your passion for entrepreneurship, man? Um, it's it's been a lot of people, but I actually when I was in college, I, I used to work in finance. Um, I, I worked in finance for some years to pay off student debt and wow. I had a really high paying job and I was pretty good at it. And yeah. I thought that I wanted to be an entrepreneur or I had the, the inkling. I, my first business was like the lemonade stand. And I, you know, I kind of always thought I would, I would try something, but leaving finance was actually really hard because they mm. pay you really well. And it feels, you know, on a relative basis, pretty, pretty risk, uh, on a risk adjusted basis, pretty, pretty safe. Um, but I, a, a mentor gave me this book called risk takers and it was profiles of people who had started their own companies, including Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx. Mm. And I remember reading that book and thinking it's actually a risk not to, try taking doing a startup if if you have that itch right because mm. the biggest risk is that you end up at the end of life thinking like about th regretting the things you didn't do so yeah. that that book um was really pivotal for me and, and just the inspiring stories of other entrepreneurs who have come before me and have taken taken the risk to create something that didn't exist before and solve yeah. a problem yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I was I was talking to uh, you know someone the other day, and I asked him. You know, he he was telling me like you know as an entrepreneur, the biggest you're you're it's a it's a really it's a high risk, high reward role, right? And you know, you you are if people pay a premium for your solution or your product or whatever, or they see the value in it. You know, saying that's actually that's amazing, right? Because that's a voluntary they participate in a free market system. And what was so inspiring about what he was saying was really how he's like, it's a noble act, right? And I think often people don't realize entrepreneurship, you know, there's all the different types of ways you can think about entrepreneurship. Oftentimes people think about entrepreneurship as I have to build a billion dollar company or a million dollar company. That's yeah. one, but it's also just building a community garden and like supporting people and building community. Simple as that, you know? Yeah, I actually think the most important part of an entrepreneur's job is to find a problem that you want to solve and then yeah. offer a solution that the market is excited about too. Right. So Simple like, as work, that. work for the problem. Like entrepreneurs by definition have to solve a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, let me let me talk to you, Or You know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs who are tuning in right now. Shout out to Justin. Shout out to Le Le Alexandra, who's like, I'm audio for sure. Hey, you know, I love audio. Shout out to uh, uh, Ch Chamaka, who's who's saying, hey, Tim Chamaka from C Canada. Shout out to Derek as well. Been a semi-professional poker player for a bit. And I would definitely be interested in learning via audio. Check out yeah. Noble. Check Noble. out Noble right now. Uh, FYI. <laughs> right now, Noble.FYI. You've, you've got a code for your listeners too, Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. And actually, I'm going to put that in the comments right now. So check out Noble.FYI if you really, really want to learn and listen to some of the – really the master classes of their industries, whether it be entrepreneurship, hosting a home in Airbnb, everything, you name it, it's on Noble. So I want to, you know, talk to you one real quick because we got some entrepreneurs who are listening to us in our community, man. What is your recommendation on how to effectively fundraise? Yeah, it's such a big topic, right? Like there's, yeah. whole, there's whole courses on, on fundraising, but I think really like just starting the basic principle is know, yeah. know what problem you're solving and why you need to fundraise to solve that problem. Like really understand yeah. your yourself first before you think about the motivation, because it's, um, and get educated on what fundraising involves. So there's great, mm. there's a lot of free blogs. Like Paul Graham is a great thought leader on fundraising. Um, 
and and a lot of VCs will like put out stuff on on how to fundraise, but also yeah. talk, talk with other entrepreneurs who have fundraised. That's actually the most valuable source of information because they've gone through the process, especially ones who've done yeah. it recently, because they're kind of always new rules to the game. Um, so one is get smart on yourself, mm. get smart on the industry, like really understand what VCs want and what a VC investor looks for is very different than what um, kind of an angel investor will look for in terms mm. of the risk reward profile. So like understand does your business, does the product you're selling, which effectively is the equity in your business, is that interesting to, to, the, to the person that, that you're yeah. trying to pitch or not? Um, and build your network of other entrepreneurs, right? That's yeah. really, that's the best referral network for VCs. It's also the best education network. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And, and I, I think what Warren is saying, and a lot of entrepreneurs don't know this early on when they're building a venture, whether it be in high tech or any sector, is they they don't understand that you have to understand the fundamentals of your business. And it's something I'm so adamant about when uh, when it comes to uh, uh, sharing just educational um, content on LinkedIn. And, you know, to your point, it's like, what's the risk reward? profile you know vcs investors everyone wants to know that right because they want to be a part of something well okay there's a clear mission but more importantly there's clear outcomes to that mission yeah and vcs in particular if they have a big fund they're usually looking for a bigger outcome right so they also want to believe yeah. that you're attacking a big market or you can you have the yeah. opportunity to create a market right which is kind of like yeah. what uber and airbnb did so uh yeah understanding vc motivation is is important if you want to fundraise yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. So I want to show love to everyone that's tuning in right now. So shout out to Valentina. Shout out to Justin. Thank you so much. Justin is a super entrepreneur. He does all kinds of different things. Justin, let us know if you have any question in the comments so we can show you some love, man, and, and, and really and really shout you out and have Warren address them. So, you know, Warren, when, when you think about, you know, what uh, just looking at some of the 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 lives you've been able to touch with with noble man you know for you you know what has been kind of a the best story um in terms of the impact you all have been able to create man yeah so i love talking with customers it's, it's one of the fa my favorite parts of the job and I, yeah. it's also it's also the thing that i think is most helpful for finding product market fit as fast as possible right like you're trying to make yeah. something that solves problems for people so the best way to figure out if you're getting closer to that or succeeding and getting ideas is talking to the people who, you, who's, who you're trying to help yeah. um so we did a course on on how to make a podcast and a guy uh, took the course, made his own podcast, and then interviewed me. He invited me to be a, an interviewee on his podcast. And it was so cool to see that full circle of like, wow, we put something out in the world and this is like come to life for this person. And yeah. we have a course on launch a startup and it's a really special course. It's it's the course that I wish I would have had when I was starting out as an entrepreneur 10 years ago. Mm. It's hosted by Alexis Ohanian, who's the co-founder of Reddit. He's also an investor in Knowable. And Alexis is... he. He's really a he's a mensch. Like he really cares about entrepreneurs. He cares about the mission mm. of entrepreneurship and the, believes that it can help make society better, right? Because entrepreneurs go out and, and look for problems to solve. Um, but he, um, I, I'm really proud of that course. We have interviews with the founders of Everlane, the founder of Goat, the sneaker marketplace, a startup lawyer, wow. uh, startup investors, and um, that one we had someone who who took the course and I talked with her and she said, "Hey, I did I not a." confident person. I'm a shy person, but I took your course yeah. and it gave me the confidence I needed to go to a pitch contest. I won that pitch contest. I got funding and she's based in Georgia and she now has a business that is in the in the um, wedding uh, dress space. So like the problem she realized was wedding dresses are really expensive. So she's creating mm -hmm. a secondhand um, community for, for dresses. Um, and tons of stories like that. We've got a course on buy your first home and people have said, hey, this helped me save tens of thousands of dollars um, yeah. on my home purchase. So it's it's yeah. cool, but you know our mission is to help people get closer to achieving their goals, and this it's it's fun to see it already happening, even though we only launched six months ago. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's the power of it, right? When you know you you solve a problem, and, and I and what's so what's so powerful about that too is the fact that you know it, we, you and I we've kind of talked about this before is the power of learning and education. Yeah, and really, you know, I, what I, what I love right now is that e-learning is like you're seeing a resurgence in education yeah. and the importance of it and the importance of quality too. Yeah. So e-learning, I just saw some stats um, put out by GSV, which is a venture fund that focuses on, on the education space. And yeah. they're predicting that because of COVID, um, e-learning is going to reach a trillion dollar biz industry in the next five years, which is basically three yeah. X growth because of COVID. So Online learning is becoming a reality faster than we when we anticipated, and mm. you you hit on it, Tim, which is 
quality is it's hard to find. Um, it's hard to know what's what's reliable and what's not. And uh, I think anybody who's trying to create more relevance in education is is doing good uh, a good service yeah. because if if we have a better educated world, we're going to be able to solve more problems together, right? Like climate change <laughs> is a huge problem, but like if we don't have an educated populace, then that's then yeah. so what. Yeah. 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 Preach, brother. Preach, man. So shout out to Terrence. Hi, Tim. Listening in from Southern California. What's good, Terrence? Shout out to Chiamaco once again. Terrence, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, Terrence, if you have any questions, Justin, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments right here. You know, we are going to be sharing a noble link so you all can have free access to download the app in the App Store, iOS and Android, I believe. Yep. Right. So yep. definitely let us know. And, you know, Warren, I want you to. So we're going to do a quick rapid fire round. Uh, who is your favorite teacher? Mr. Robinson in high school. He taught yeah. AP European history. Amazing teacher. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, what was your favorite subject in high school? European history. Yeah. European like, history. That's I, cool. That's cool. I, yeah. I loved it. And, and mostly because yeah. of the teacher, right? Like a great teacher who's enthusiastic and gets you excited about anything is is just a, a a gift yeah yeah i agree i agree man you know when when you think about because you know you're a fellow optimist as well when you think about your your vision for for the world man what do you think is the biggest problem we should be solving right now our our vision is that lifelong learning becomes the literacy of the 21st century right like mm -hmm. we want everyone to be thinking about constantly how they can learn more in life because what happened our current system is like you go to school maybe you go to college and then you just stop learning and that's it forever, right? And like, yeah. the, there's just no thought given to how we can continue to to grow and reach our potential. So that, I think if we help the world increase its knowledge, mm. then we will solve more problems together. And and not just the very top people, all, all across the board. Um, I think there's an H.G. Wells quote, he's a sci-fi writer and, and in the 20th, 20th century, he wrote this great line, which is that, humanity is in a race between education and catastrophe and i think that's true and so um yeah the more people can learn the the stronger will be as a species yeah learning is the great equalizer man i agree with that e-learning is also a great opportunity for those who don't like the high school and or university environment what are your thoughts on this warren yeah it, it, i mean it's proven different people have different learning styles right so some yeah. people really benefit from the you know teacher format and graded and other people want to be self-directed and so I, I think finding your own learning style is important and um, we actually have a free course called learn to learn and it talks about that like how do you find it you know where how do you focus um, it's a great course by the way oh cool thank you tim yeah it's probably. a great course yeah we've got a world memory champion who basically she didn't finish high school or she almost didn't finish high school and then she thought she couldn't didn't have a good memory and she's literally the, one of the world's best memorizers now and she taught herself and um yeah, uh, there's there's just so much around like misconceptions of oh if I don't do well in school I'm not smart and I think that's mm. that's a real pox on society right now. Yeah, I, I sucked it. I I I didn't care for tests. <laughs> but if I look back at like high school and college, I didn't really care for it because I was like, okay, I have to do it, but it wasn't something that I really cared for at the end of the yeah. day. And you know that shouldn't be a qualifier for how much impact you can make in the world or how much value you can create in the world. You know. I, I agree. And I think it's actually we do a disservice to humanity when we teach people that they have to do something in order for the grade rather than for yeah. the intrinsic value of wanting to do something. Right. Yeah. Um, we're kind of like beating out the curiosity that kids have innately and and trying to create this like carrot system for stick carrot system for for all learning. And I think that needs to be undone. Preach, brother. Preach. With that said, Warren, man, where can the people connect with you, man, and find you, bro? Yeah. So uh, me personally, I'm on Twitter, WWShafe, S-H-A-E-F, or um, check out our company, knowable.fyi. You can email us at hello at knowable.fyi. And uh, we love hearing from customers or prospective customers or people in the world. Our, our goal is to help people solve problems. So uh, send us a problem. We'll see if we can send help. Them a problem. That's it. Yeah. Love it. And you can actually go on noble.fyi and you can actually request courses as well. Yep. Or even request instructors that you're really interested in having on the platform. So make sure you go check that out. Noble.fyi. In fact, let me go ahead and add that. Oh, I already added it. So you guys got it a few times and you guys should see it across all platforms. So check it out. It's really, really amazing the work that they're doing and the lives that they're changing. Warren. It's truly been a pleasure having you on the show today, brother. You know, what is your 
powerful words of wisdom that you want to leave with our amazing community now? I mean, I'm just impressed by your optimism, Tim. And I think that I think optimism is so important, especially in time when times yeah. feel tough. And and so trying to be grateful for the things that we have has always been helpful to me. Um, and and I hope that people are looking after themselves and treating themselves with kindness and treating others with kindness too. Yeah, man. Preach, brother. Preach, man. With that said, Warren, thank you so much for tuning in, man. We'll have you on the show in the future, hopefully, man. I love that. I love that. Cool. <laughs> I bet. Good to see you, Tim. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another lovely episode of Unleashing the Future of Work. I just had an amazing B2B Jam session with Warren Schaefer, the CEO of Noble. Paula, thank you so much for tuning in. Internet also expands into remote areas where people don't have access or the funding to attend university. I find this is a great opportunity for the world. Paula, I agree 110%. I think, you know, with all the problems that we're seeing in the education sector and e-learning right now, you know, the future of learning is completely decentralized and personalized as well. And, you know, one of the, the, the most important aspects for us uh, with God is we're building that future for the workforce um, in terms of skills training. And, you know, for, for us uh, from a social impact lens is how are we doing it in a sense where we're also giving back and really paying it forward for people who are in low income areas, right, that are that don't have the access to the education that they require. So, or even more so importantly, the, the people, the mentorship um, and, and the opportunities and the access. And I, I think, you know, breaking down access barriers, Paula, is, is so important when it comes to learning for the workforce, but as well as for the entire world, to be honest with you. So, you know, we always have to keep that front of mind. With that said, thank y'all so much for tuning in to another lovely episode of Unleashing the Future of Work a live guide podcast. I would love for you all, if you're interested in being a future guest on the episode, on the series, check us out, utfow.com, a guide podcast. And more importantly, let us know if there's someone that you want to have as a guest. We're completely open to guests and encouraging our guests to have a platform on utfo live a guide podcast so please give us your feedback let us know and we'll definitely welcome it with that said y'all thank y'all so much i appreciate y'all for tuning in i will be with you all tomorrow peace love and see you later